Order in the court. I order in the court. Please settle down. Mrs. Speedman, your witness. Miss Judd, why are we here today? Wasting the court's time, Judge Whelan's time, the entire justice system's time. But that's not what I'm doing. Sure you are, Miss Judd. You are already a convicted woman. We all know the story. The blonde butcher, the velvet tigress. It happened a little over a year ago. I think it would still be fresh for you, but allow me to refresh your memory. October 16, 1931. You had plans to spend the weekend with your close friends from your job at the clinic. Hedvig Samuelson, Agnes Ann Leroy, Sammy and her roommate Ann. What fun you ladies must have been planning to have together. But with a hidden agenda as large as you had, there just might not be enough room for thoughts of fun in that pretty little head. Three beautiful young women, all fascinated with the charms of one man. This man. Uh... John Halloran, or Happy Jack, as many know him. And why shouldn't he be? He's a prominent businessman with the respect and admiration of his community. A real friend to Phoenix, Arizona. And he was a friend of yours as well, wasn't he, Miss Judd? But Happy Jack has many friends, including your two friends, Anne and Sammy. And that just wasn't going to jive with you, was it, Miss Judd? There was an argument. Winnie, you're acting all crackers, I swear. What you have with Jack is nothing more than what I got. Or even Annie here. Uh, what do you mean by even? Nothing, doll. I'm just picking words from a bag. No, no! It's not like that with us! I'm no bear cat like you two. What we have is love. <laughs> if I'm a bear cat, that man's a chic. And he's got you all hot and bothered, laughing all the way to crazy town. Hey, I think what we have is real love, too. Now don't you be starting up on this. And that night, you crept into their bedroom. Winnie! What did you do? Same thing I'm doing to you. <laughs> but that's not how it happened! The next day, your co-workers saw you ferociously tapping away. Few noticing the bandage on your hand. But we'll get to that. On the morning of October 19th, you were boarded on the overnight train to Los Angeles with two large suitcases stowed away. Fortunately, the luggage handler on duty that morning has been such for six years and is somewhat of a luggage expert. And there was most certainly something odd about these particular items. Hmm. Mr. Stevenson, there is something mystical about these bags here. Oh yeah, bag boy? In what way? In the smell. It smells like dragon birthing. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I'm here to pick up my bags. Uh, here's my ticket n uh, with the bag numbers. Thank you, have a swell day. Ma'am, there appears to be some type of spoiled food or game in your case. According to station policy, we must ask you to unlock your case for closer inspection. What? My case? Uh... But I don't... I, I don't have the keys with me. Well, ma'am, we would be glad to hold on to these items until you were able to collect the keys in question. And you fled, didn't you, Miss Judd? But that luggage handler was cunning, and he knew to contact the Los Angeles Police Department. Ah, uh, yep. We better open it. And what did they find in that first case? <laughs> the nude corpse of a woman jackknifed into her leather tomb. Uh Oh dear God, no. This of course was Agnes Ann Leroy. If that weren't nightmare inducing enough, they had to continue to the second case. This can't be. Looks like she went and hacked this one up. Of course it wasn't difficult for Sammy or Anne to be identified. Within each suitcase, there were plenty of photographs and letters implicating these young ladies. Even your own written letter of confession discovered 
torn to pieces. <sighs> this was such a clear-cut case of double murder. The noble jury was right to see through your attempt to justify this horror as an act of defense. You even went so far as to shoot your own hand in a feeble attempt to cover your despicable tracks. Really, Miss Judd, this is getting pathetic. But that's not it at all! I'm here today to tell the whole truth. I'm going to be hanged for something Jack Halloran is responsible for. I was convicted of murder, but I shot in self-defense. Jack Halloran removed every bit of evidence. He is responsible for me going through all of this. He is guilty of anything I am guilty of. What? Come on, this broad is crazy. This is how it happened. They invited me over that night to play bridge. It was me and Sammy and another girl, Portia. But the other girl left early, and it was those two who went off the deep end that night. Winnie, what the hell was Portia saying about you introducing her to Happy Jack? Don't you know that girl's being treated for syphilis? Are you trying to kill him or something? But we were just making friends, honest! You lame brain. It's bad enough you're the biggest slut at work, but you gotta bring in more to do him in? Yeah, well everyone at work thinks you two are a pair of lesbian perverts! Huh? Well, maybe everyone at work gotta hear how you have a dying husband in Los Angeles while you're here spreading your gams for Happy Jack. That'd be a juicy story for sure. You tell him that, and I'll tell Dr. Summers how you're the one that broke his x-ray machine, Anne, and how you did it on purpose in a stupid hissy fit! There was only so fast I could go driving my friends away, so I went to the kitchen to wash my milk cup. I didn't even see Sammy coming. <gasps> you stupid. Ow! <sighs> oh, God! Ow! <laughs> Shoot her, Sammy! Shoot her! Eh, eh. You're the lesbian! Please! I'm gonna bring you! <laughs> yes, yes. This is all very interesting, and we've heard these tales of fancy before. Wait, I'm not finished. I'm telling the whole truth, because that's when I ran into Jack. I took myself home as soon as possible, but when I got there, Jack was sitting on my porch, oh, hey. dead drunk. I told him what had happened, but he wouldn't believe it, and I couldn't convince him. So to prove it, I took him back there myself. Oh man, what a mess. We gotta move this situation around, Winnie. Oh, uh, yikes. Maybe I ought to turn myself in, Jack. Uh, are you kidding? If you tell the police the same story you told me, the first thing they're gonna do is laugh in your face. Then they're gonna follow that up by sticking cuffs on you and straight to the hanging booth. He made me afraid of the police, and he made me afraid of going to jail. I mean, they'll probably rape you. I'm talking about the state attorneys. <laughs> I was sobbing so much when he brought those great big cases up. He told me he'd drive me home and he'd finish the job himself. Uh, you're not really being that helpful anyway, so I'll take care of it. At first he told me the plan was to drive the trunks to the desert and leave them there. But later, he changed his mind and told me I ought to take the trunks with me to Los Angeles and get rid of them far away from Phoenix. And so that's what I did. And that's how I ended up here. Good God, woman. Mr. Speedman, do you wish to bring anyone else to testify? Your Honor, my client has no interest in testifying, as this is nothing but the mere ramblings of a crazy person. Furthermore, her accusations of my client are irrelevant if she claims the murders were in self-defense. If the murders were in self-defense, there is no crime committed, and we ask the case be dismissed. Yes, uh, it seems rather inconsistent, and such a trial would be an idle gesture. <gasps> ah! Gee whiz, 
So, then what happened, Happy Jack? Well, if that broad was trying to play up that insanity defense with that crazy speech, it worked. They took her off to death row and instead sent her to the nutty bin. The way I hear her, Merlinger and dried up pretty soon in there. She escaped like five or six times, but they kept sticking her back in. One time she escaped for six years and was working as a maid in San Francisco, but they caught her again and now she's back in there. God damn. That's a hell of a story, Jack. Crazy broad. But she had heart. I'll give her that. 